So today's guest started out competing in martial arts before discovering the importance of one particular training tool that stood out above everything else. As an Onnit Academy Senior Kettlebell Coach, his combined strength and conditioning and mobility to make sure that his clients are getting bigger, faster, stronger, and keep improving flexibility through creative workouts that challenge any ability. Our guest is also known for his passion for bodyweight movement and promoting exploration of exercise techniques that break the mold of traditional workouts. Embracing our animal flow and getting in the swing of things with the Kettlebell King, please join me in welcoming Eric Leha to the Escape Your Limits podcast. Welcome, thanks. What's up, Matthew? <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for the rooftop location. Oh, anytime. <laughs> it's, my, it's my spot. <laughs> you just, just have kidding. to be careful for the helicopter that's hovering <laughs> over our jets. heads. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice view, though. So, so you're also known as Primal Swolger. So, yeah, so, so what's Primal what, Swolger. So, so tell us, what, what, what's Primal Swolger? Primal Swolger, uh, well, here's the thing. So when I first started out you know, about four, four years ago, I was working for On It. I was a new coach. On It's like, hey man, you know, uh, my boss and the marketing team, like, hey man, you need to, or my boss, which is my brother. Oh, okay. Like, hey man, he was the gym manager at the time. He's like, you need to start an Instagram and a Facebook. I, I wasn't into social media at the time. I was like, man, fuck that stuff. That stuff is dumb. I don't want to do selfies and be super douchey online. And he's like, nah, man, you gotta use it to promote yourself. You need a platform, you need to promote yourself, promote your business and start training people. You know, you'll know, you find more clients if you promote yourself. It's like, all right, what's the dumbest thing I could think of? I was really against you know, social media. I was like, what's the dumbest name that I can think of? At the time we were selling uh, primal kettlebells and you know, we're really into the primal side of nutrition and training and you know, keeping things really, really primal. So I was like, all right, I'll go with primal, what else? What's, what's strong uh, about a soldier? How can we make that sound kind of stupid? How uh, about a swole, soldier, primal swole, just the stupidest thing I could think of. <laughs> so I just I put that up there. Everybody laughed, you know, everybody in the marketing team was like, oh man, that's so dumb. And then, you know, I just, just kind of caught on a little bit, I guess. But that's where that stemmed from. I, was, right. I just thought it was the dumbest thing I could think of. Well, it's one of those things that sticks <laughs> in your mind. You never forget it. It's uh, kind of clever, I guess. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I, I first heard of, well. It's funny first, when people call me that. You know, people yeah. call me primal or swolger all the time. Even people that are in my everyday life, you know, they, that's what they know me as. I'm like, no, my name's Eric. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, yeah. I, and I guess it's good to have a name that, a brand that yeah. just stands out. For yeah. sure. I, 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 first, I first heard about you on uh, Joe Rogan. That's where I first heard the name oh, really? and, and saw, saw some stuff. And then recently, nice. as we were talking, um, Gunnar Peterson, uh, yeah. he, he did your workout, yeah, workshop. Yeah, he came to my workshop. Yeah. yeah. So he's, how did you get awesome. in touch with Joe, Joe Rogan? How did that, that connection? Well, Joe Rogan is uh, one of the main guys that on it. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's part of the company. So he promotes all of on its products and he was talking about the gym, you know, and so I've actually met him a couple times. He's come through and worked out with us. Um, but yeah, I think he was like plugging our supplements and plugging the gym. And uh, he just took notice of, you know, my workouts and stuff online and just being at the gym all the time. So that was cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so take us back then. What, what was the young primal swolger? What, what, <laughs> what kind of, what was your young ins inspiration? You know, how did like when you I was a kid growing yeah. up, man, growing up, I was, chubby kid man i was super lazy i like to play video games watch movies and just you know eat junk food i used to eat fast food all the time i used to drive through uh, all the drive-through places like uh burger king uh wendy's all the here in the united states all the the worst place you could possibly think of and i just you know i like chilling and being fat i thought i was you know i was like one day i'll grow up you know i'll grow into myself but uh going into middle school uh which is great i was like 12, 13 years old, my brother and sister were making fun of me all the time. They're about eight years older than me. They're like, man, you're never going to have a girlfriend. You're so fat. You haven't even kissed a girl yet. You're already in middle school. I'm like, man, I thought I was doing all right. Like, yeah, well, you're fat. You need to lose weight. And so they kept teasing me. So I was like, man, I dropped all the junk food, dropped the video games. I uh, started, I took up like running and working out. I remember uh, the first workouts I was doing was like basic bodybuilding workouts uh, that I learned from the Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, that big fat book. 
I picked that up. My brother had it uh, in his room. I stole it from him and started reading through it. Started working out. And uh, I remember I did football in middle school too to kind of, you know, get into sports. And, you know, after that, I realized. So was it all just to get girls then? Was that your kind of yeah, motivation? Yeah, man. I wanted to get in shape so I could eventually kiss a girl, you know. <laughs> I felt like I was falling behind. I was already in sixth grade and hadn't kissed a girl yet. I guess, you know, that's the measure. But, yeah, I just wanted to get in shape, man. So I running and working out. But then what happened was I played football and realized I didn't like ball sports. You know, I started That's when, around the same time, like, UFC and MMA became you know, pretty popular, started kind of blowing up a little bit. So I was like, man, I want to be like those guys. I remember growing up, I really loved uh, Dragon Ball Z and, and Dragon Ball, which is like martial arts guys fighting all the time. So I was like, man, I want to be like Goku. I want to be like those UFC fighters. It's like, as, that's as tough as you're going to get. You know, those guys are in the best shape, better shape than anybody. They got to be because they're trying to kill each other. So I, I took up uh, jujitsu and uh, boxing and kickboxing. And I kind of just fell in love with it. Uh, I did that all throughout high school. And I ended up um, kind of taking a step back from martial arts. I did some jujitsu tournaments uh, when I was in high school. But then I realized, man, I really need to focus on school. You know, so I ended up focusing really hard on school so I could get into a good college. And, you know, busted my ass off, you know, became a study worm. And, you know, worked really hard and got into a good school in Austin. And I ended up going to school uh, at UT Austin and realized, man, I don't have any social skills. You know, I couldn't make any friends. Uh, I never really liked drinking, so I didn't. I couldn't connect with anybody because they didn't. I didn't like to drink very much. You know. So when you say no social skills, was that picking up for picking up girls or just yeah, like, yeah, picking oh, up right. girls. I was still <laughs> scared of girls, even though I was in shape. You know, and I knew how to beat people up. I was still scared to talk to girls. I had this fear. Uh, it's like, I just like, I had a lot of anxiety, I guess, poor social skills, and I was just unhappy in college, and, you know, it was a good school, you know, but I, what, real, what I realized was I busted my ass off, you know, to learn and be a bookworm that I didn't learn how to, you know, make friends, and I ended up going to a school where there was a lot of smart people, and they had poor social skills, too, they didn't, you know, it was really hard to connect with anybody, and then so I ended up dropping out of college and actually uh, driving up to Minnesota with a UFC fighter friend of mine, a friend of my brother's who introduced us. And he's like, hey man, you know, you're into fighting. Why don't you uh, come hang out with me? I'm gonna train for a fight coming up. Uh, let me take you to Minnesota with me uh, up north. And I drove up with him and experienced that, that full, you know, fighter life and kind of got a taste of what it's like to really, you know, immerse myself in uh, like a, the way a fighter likes to live and like how to really just go all in with something that you love you know I didn't end up being a professional fighter but I really got a, a taste of what it's like to be a professional athlete professional fighter and you know at the same time you know I, I started listening to podcasts more motivational stuff like Joe Rogan podcast I was super into it at the time and it kind of like got me to stop being scared you know that I took that leap of faith I dropped out of school and I started just you know just training and hanging out with UFC fighters but then after I came back to Austin after a couple months uh, I dropped out of school I didn't have a job I was like fuck I dropped out of school I need to make some money what am I gonna do and then that's when um, I kind of got into uh, like psychedelics and stuff what, and I was uh, what's that what's, like what's that like so growing up man like I said I didn't like drinking I never done a single drug but then I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast he's talking about how how um, mind expanding it is to smoke weed I was like man let me try this stuff out so I actually hung out with a buddy who was into the same kind of stuff into Joe Rogan and Jiu Jitsu he said hey man you gotta try it out so all right, I tried it out I got high for the first time I remember I was like flying through like I was super stoned. I felt like I was tripping out. I was like flying through like hieroglyphs and like pyramids. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I never, mind you, I'd never even been drunk before. I was just like blown away by this new state of consciousness. And so it really opened my mind to like, man, you know, there's so much more out there that I've been missing out on. I need to stop being scared. I need to stop being scared to like make friends and talk to girls. Like, 
So what was that like smoking weed or what? Yeah, were you just smoking? smoking weed, just smoking oh, a joint. Okay. Yeah. And, and what that? That yeah. like opened me up, opened my eyes. You know, I'd always been scared and timid. You know, even though I'd trained martial arts and you know. So doesn't that like just make you not want to do anything though? Like, does that take away your sort of motivation? No, it like, didn't. It no. opened me because like I, it showed me a new way to see things. You know, I'd never been drunk. I had never done any other type of drugs. So for me, it was a new state of consciousness. A new way of seeing things and feeling things. And I was like, whoa, what else is out there? And then I saw, I keep tuning into the Joe Rogan podcast. And he starts talking about this <laughs> stuff called DMT, the most powerful psychedelic in the world. I'm like, whoa, I've only ever smoked weed. I've never been drunk. I've smoked weed. That's like all I've ever done now at this point. And what's, well, what's DMT then? Dimethyltryptamine is supposed to be uh, apparently... Uh, it's like they call it the spirit molecule. Right. It's that's supposed to be a really powerful psychedelic. Uh, they say it's uh, the active ingredient in ayahuasca. You ever heard of ayahuasca? Okay. It's like okay. the spiritual tea that they drink down in the Amazon to like have like spiritual awakenings that you like trip out. It's kind of like mushrooms. Okay. You know, super psychedelic experience. But Joe Rogan was the way he likes to describe it is it's like a uh, it's like mushrooms times a thousand. You know, he's, uh, there's people that say that you, you can speak to entities and travel to other universes that are indescribable. So for me, I'm like, whoa, that sounds dope. I want to try it out. And then so. So where like, do you like? How do you kind of find that stuff? Then you get it from plants. Through my weed dealer. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> but so the weed dealer, he said, like, hey man, because I was going to get my regular. It was like literally like the third time I'd ever gotten high. I'm gonna go hang out with the same friend who who I got high with for the first time so within three weeks. And then it just so happens, I'm picking up weed from the weed guy. He said, hey man, I got this stuff called DMT. I'm like, what? I was just, I just barely learned about that last week. He's like, oh, well, you gotta try it out, man. It's super badass. You know, you're gonna travel through the, to another dimension. And I'm like, man, yeah, sell me some. And so did I, you ask him if you could pick up girls on it as well? Or was it, <laughs> <laughs> were you over that by then? <laughs> nah, I was still a little scared, you know? And then so I smoked DMT for the first time and my brain melted. I, my consciousness left my body and like I felt like I like died. I had like a spiritual, like an out of body experience. It really? was so powerful that I felt like, I felt like I died, you know, and came back. And then I had like, like appreciation for being back in my body and in this world. And I'm like, man. Were you, yeah. were you try, do you think you was trying to escape something that was like yeah. in your head? Do you, yeah, you, for sure. Yeah. All the fears and all the skeletons in my closet, all the things I was trying to hide in, in like in my in my subconscious and you know like shying away from on the day to day basis kind of just come full force when you're under such a powerful psychedelic like DMT or mushrooms. Right. It just brought everything to the surface and then made me realize, man, I need to stop being a little bitch. <laughs> Like, why am I scared of like talking to girls or doing what I really want to do? And, you know, I just need to fucking just do what I want to do. You know, if I see a girl, I need to talk to her. If I see an opportunity, I need to take it. Right. You know, and just try. So that was like your turning point. was Yeah, it from... to stop being afraid because okay. it felt like literally like I died. Right. You know, there were because I ended up liking it so much that I started making it myself. Right. I tried it a few times. I was like, all right, this is way too expensive to keep buying it. <laughs> how can I make, how can I keep doing this to keep expanding my mind and keep learning more about myself, you know? And so I started, I looked it up online, found a recipe, ordered all the materials and started making it myself. It was dope. And then so. So that's a separate ebook that you come to later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so that allowed me to. So did you, were you hooked on it then or? I wasn't hooked on it. I just really liked it. You know, <laughs> for me, there's a difference between being addicted and really liking something and right. loving it. You know, and what's what's the? How would you describe the difference then in, in those two? Uh, you of can, it not being in control of you being saying you're not gonna do it again, and then 24 hours later you're doing it again. Right. You know. Right. So for me, I, I could do it every single day and then stop doing it for a week. Right. And, or a month. That but, sounds pretty intense, like doing <laughs> that kind of stuff every day. I, it helped me, it really helped me sleep. And I like seeing cool shit, you know? And, and how long were you? Five minutes. Of, oh, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, you trip out for like five, ten minutes and you feel super euphoric. And, but, I and definitely. Is it the sort of thing that you want to, like after five minutes, you want to keep doing it again? No. Oh, it's not? No, you just fall asleep. 
right, wow. Yeah, apparently it's the it gets released when you sleep in heavy deep sleep. It helps. Apparently, I, mean, I heard it, it helps you dream. Um, people that have near death experiences, uh, they say that you know when they see they they say they die or they see God, they say that when you have a near death experience, that molecule gets produced by your pineal gland and helps you see these visions. Right. And so they predict that when you die you see you get a hormone dump of of dmt in your brain and right you see visions so so but, when you were going through that then were you sort of thinking about business or were you just kind of you know like, i was really just going through and like smashing all all preconceived notions of like like my fears you know right and i was able to finally just do my own thing you know i really let go of school and uh, actually, Aubrey uh, Who, found out that, that I was. Aub that? Aubrey Marcus is uh, the CEO of On It. Okay. Yeah, he's the founder of On It. Uh, On It was all about total human optimization. And at the time, he had his own uh, his own website called Warrior Poet, right. where he would explore psychedelics and explore uh, all these different methods of ex expanding your mind, and you know optimizing his life and then he found out that I was into psychedelics and he's like hey man uh, you want to help me with my website like, yeah <laughs> man I'll be like your assistant so I started working for uh, Aubrey on the side and I was like hey man you know this is cool helping you out with this stuff but uh, I need to like make some money now that I'm not in school and stuff he's like, all right well um, how about you work in the warehouse uh, there's always room for you in the warehouse at on it you know I work there I'm like yeah sure so I started working in the warehouse, packing kettlebells and supplements into boxes, you know, really grunty work, but I stuck it out just because uh, it was a really small company at the time, and I got to work with a lot of close friends. Um, like I said, growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends. I actually just became friends with my older brother's crew, right. which is Aubrey, these UFC fighters, and uh, all these uh, people that were a little bit older than me, but a lot of them worked at on it. So I was like, yeah, I'll go work in the warehouse. I'll get to work with all my friends, you know? So I kind of grew up in that warehouse, you know, hanging out with all these older crew who had a lot of wisdom and a lot of things to teach me. So I stuck it out for a couple years, you know, just working in the warehouse. And were you still doing your DMT through that? No, I stopped oh, doing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why, why did you stop then? Because I felt like I learned enough. Right. I learned enough because I stopped seeing things. I stopped seeing visions. I was like, even even though I would load up the bowl with like a crap load of DMT, <laughs> I would feel the euphoric feeling, but I wouldn't see anything anymore. So or, you were doing it to sort of see, yeah, to Is see that, things and to okay. to try to find out like things about myself and my subconscious and maybe things that I was hiding. But I stopped seeing things, or I would see the same things. Right. So I started feeling like, oh man, I'm not learning anything anymore, or I'm being punished by the DMT to where I'm like not being allowed back into this this ethereal realm you know i was like man i need to i need to take a step back and kind of reassess what i've already learned from this this chemical and right. what i've learned about myself already and kind of try to accomplish those goals that it showed me before that i need to work on you know i needed to do the work before i learn anything else right you know because i wasn't i wasn't seeing anything new so right. i've put that away and just worked and was that the, the old sort of lesson you thought, right now I need to get myself together and sort of get on a bit of a trail to, to do yeah, something? Yeah, and just, you know what, just just work. Right. And, and did you have any idea of where that was going to go? Like you started in a warehouse, did, did you sort of do that to sort of get somewhere or was it like this is just a job and I'll take... Oh, so I took up, uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to stop smoking weed, stop doing drugs, I'm going to do an MMA fight. So I ended up doing an MMA fight uh, it was like the first year I was working in the warehouse. I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty strong, I'm lifting these boxes all the time, and I'm, I'm, I've always loved MMA. I'm gonna take an MMA fight. And so I ended up doing a mixed martial arts fight for the first time, and it was brutal. It was a three round fight. I lost a split decision, but we ended up winning am Texas Amateur Fight of the Year because it was such a brutal fight. Right. Yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. If you look up my name, Eric Leha, it'll come up. It was a back-to-back -back battle, man. And but that made me realize, fuck, man, this shit is tough. This shit is crazy. This is the craziest thing I've ever signed up for. 
you know. But it made me it get it helped me gain a new appreciation for for you know UFC fighting and MMA fighting. And but after that, uh, Aubrey approached me again. He's like, hey man, you know we're selling all this equipment. We're selling kettlebells, maces, clubs, and battle ropes. Um, I want to try to we should open a gym so we can teach people how to use our tools. Right. Not just sell equipment, but we want to educate educate our, our consumers on how to use this equipment. Um, he's like, you know, you're you're really familiar with the UFC fighters, um, you know, and you've always been in shape and into martial arts and working out. Uh, do you want to be one of our trainers? He's like, you'll you fit the bill, you know, you you'll be able to coach through these MMA fighters. You'll be able to relate to them, and you know, you seem like you 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 would like to do it. I'm like, yeah, man, I would love to, you know. So he's all right. Uh, we had a small gym at the time at, on it. It was an employee-only gym, but my brother, who was already a personal trainer and good friends with Aubrey, Aubrey let him work out there and train his own clients out of our small gym. And so Aubrey also saw that there were a lot of people coming through that small gym. He's like, oh, you know what? We can make a successful business out of this and teach people how to use our tools. So, you know, it all worked out. My brother ended up becoming the general manager at the gym, and I spent six months uh, coaching family members and friends out of that small gym and teaching boot camps out at the local park in Austin and gained some experience uh, training people and got my kettlebell certification and the rest is history, you know? Right, right. And then, so, so what, because you've, um, you know, now, like, if I, I've looked at you on Instagram and YouTube, you know, you've got tens of thousands of people that are following your, your Instagram, your YouTube, you know, you've, you've built a huge following and I, I guess for any trainer that comes into the industry I guess that would be one of their, their sort of ultimate goals to get yeah it definitely but, makes a difference to have you know so what, what, what do you fan. say what you know what, what do you think and, and, and I'll come back to sort of your, your material but what, what do you think was some of the things that kind of got you to stand out because there's loads of people that, that are doing fitness stuff you know what what, what sort of made you uh, I think the biggest thing like that helped me grow has been um, so here's one of the biggest philosophies that we have uh, on it and in our community is the law of reciprocity. You know, the more you give and give and give, the more you're going to get back. So I really kind of took that to heart and kind of just make sure I just constantly put out free content, you know, uh, even if it's uh, put out a, like a full workout or a full circuit, you know, I give them the sets and the reps. A lot of trainers are like, hesitant to give people their workouts right you know but there's you got a lot of stuff to you know pe well, if people want to train with you they're going to train with you you know they're they're not going to just want to read the workout do it on their own you know they want to learn from you if you develop that relationship you know by constantly putting yourself out there putting out content and giving them free stuff they're eventually going to feel obligated to give back right you know so for me you know it's all about giving and giving and giving before you ask right you know you got before you try to take yeah so i just kept putting content out kept putting up videos kept giving people free stuff and then eventually you know when i finally decided to launch my own business people felt you know like hey man i'm gonna support you you've given me so much free stuff and you know you're asking for money now i'm gonna pay for it right you know pay for the product that you're selling and even after i started selling stuff online too i still give out free content right you know the biggest thing is to just give you know the more you give you'll get it back don't be afraid to <clears throat> just like 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 uh just fold you know right so so what a, what there's there's people you know as, as i talked off camera you know i did a kettlebell course sort of 10 and you got to live ago. and breathe what you preach. Right. You know, you can't, there's a lot of trainers out there who are fat, super immobile, and don't practice what they preach, you know. I, I make sure that, you know, I don't, I spend time on myself and my recovery and my training to really walk the talk, right. you know. There's a lot of trainers out there that are successful, but, you know, I feel like they could be more successful and happier if they really walk the talk. Yeah. yeah, and you're known for kettlebells, which has been around for for a long time. As I said, I did one 15 years ago, so there's nothing new really with kettlebells, but what, 
what, what sort of inspired you to say, well, I know the basic kettlebell movements. Um, what inspired you to say, well, I'm going to put a, a bit of a spin on it? Was that your intention or did you just play around and say, this, is, this feels good and this is good? How, how did you come up with that unique sort of style and, and story? Um, yeah, when I first started out, I was just sticking to the fundamentals. Uh, I remember my coaches at the Online Academy, they were like, hey man, you need to pick a tool and just run with it, you know, like make that your thing. You want to you specialize in something for now, kind of hone in on something and then you still, still want to be good at everything, but I, I wanted to specialize in something. So I picked the kettlebells since, you know, in, uh, growing up in, uh, in, the, in that community of the mixed martial arts. These guys always had a kettlebell around and they were always trained with kettlebells. So I became really familiar with all those exercises early on that I was like, you know what? I'll use the kettlebell. I'll be able to train with all these UFC fighters and show them some cool shit. And then so from there, I kind of just like started having fun with it. You know, I knew all the basics, but then I was like, you know, why not just mix it up? You know, I get bored of doing the same thing all the time. So I kind of also want to get into that mentality of uh, like a real world situation or a UFC fight. You know, it's like you're constantly changing levels and switching like you're rotating, you're using strength, you're using power, you know? So for me, mixing it up would be the ideal way to kind of translate to the chaos of a real world situation like a fight. Right. And so mixing it up was not only fun, but also more functional. Right. Putting different movements together, like a snatch into a lunge, into a get up, you know, it just made sense. And it was, uh, I was already used to training real, real linear and you know, in single directions, I wanted to try to switch it up yeah. just because I was getting bored. So and a lot of the lot of the motivation for some of those moves that you you'll be able to see um, is is really linking that to what people are actually doing in the in the UFC world. So yeah, rather than and just looking cool there. Yeah, in any sport really. Right. You know, no sport is you know in one plane of motion. Right. You know, all sports are constantly changing angles. You know, so. It makes sense to yeah. train that way as well. And, and kettlebells, a, a lot of the moves are, again, very linear. Like, you don't see a lot of moves that are across the body. But I've, I've looked at quite a bit of your stuff, and, it, and it's using it in quite a different way to, yeah. uh, to traditional, uh, I guess, traditional teaching. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a kettlebell is just a weight with a handle on it. You can do anything with you want with it. You can do rotational work. You can do strength work. You work on hypertrophy and just try to build some size. You know, it's all about changing the way you, the, the training protocols, you know. And for that, you just need a good coach or, you know, check out my programs online and I'll show you how to, how to mix it up. Yeah. So how did you take that? You, you, you built a following from doing, I guess, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you, you know, you, you create a following on, on social media through Facebook, Instagram, that kind of stuff. Yeah. By putting out free content is yeah. that really how you just build constantly your put out free content you know things are constantly changing with these like algorithms and if you be if you like you know become too too spammy then you can kind of nowadays it all kind of mess you up but I think engaging with the community is really important you know with the followers that you do have you got to make the most of it if they comment on your stuff you got to reply to those people talk to them and reply to messages in your in your inbox like you got, you gotta constantly communicate and use the platforms uh, because the social media platforms they they reward you the more you use it and the more you get people to use the platform. They want people to stay on their platform, so it's important to constantly get on there, communicate with people, put stuff out, and you'll see your your following grow. Right. And for me, getting the people to convert to to my website and to my business. Uh, like I said earlier, it's just about, you know, showing them your value face first. Don't tease them with something and then expect them to buy your product when they don't know what's behind behind that page, you know? Yeah. So I'll constantly give out free stuff. Even on my website, if you go to my website, there's a free workout program on there that you can do for four weeks. Right. That's pretty similar to the rest of the website, so. How, how long do you spend each day on either creating or commenting or posting on, on social media then or some form of it uh it's a full-time job really social media i mean yeah in terms of hours what, what what's uh 
Probably four hours a day. Really? Yeah. And then creating content, about two hours of filming every other day. Uh, but I'm trying to get to a point, uh, recently I've been able to kind of make it more efficient. You know, I'm, I'm filming two weeks on, two weeks off. So I'll spend two weeks planning, two weeks filming, two weeks planning, two weeks filming, all while still having a full-time job, uh, training people at, uh, in person at, at the gym. So, you know, it's, it's becoming, it's all about balance. Yeah. You know? And do you, is it just you or do you have a team that do all the sort of technical stuff? And, yeah, I have a team. Uh, right. I have a business partner and my girlfriend, Francesca, she uh, helps me out a lot on the back end. She helps me reach out to people for, for articles and for podcasts. Yeah. And she uh, helps me on my Instagram too. Uh, she'll go on there and uh, tell me, you know, so-and-so tagged you in this, you should check it out. So right. uh, it's all about having a strong team. Yeah. You know, without, without my team, you know, it'd be really hard to maintain and balance all the, all the back end stuff on the website, the social media, the in-person workshops and clients, you know, it's definitely, it's all about, it's not just a one person job. Yeah. So in, in terms of the progression then, so you were trying, you, you know, start as a trainer, it's like, you know, I want to aspire to, to be able to do what you've done then. So what, what are some of the tips you would do? You know, would you, you know, did you obviously didn't start with a team. You, did, did, you must've just yeah. started on your own, did you? You just or? gotta be confident, man. Like I said, uh, when I started out, I was like, man, I don't want to be in social media. Uh, it's probably because I was scared. I don't want to put myself out there. I was afraid that I wasn't ready to, I, I was a very amateur coach. I wasn't ready to be out there and put my stuff out there. I felt like I was, I was amateur, you know, I, I was insecure. Do you think that's a lot of, how a lot of people feel, you know? They, yeah, they, I think so. That's, I mean, that's how I felt. And that held you, you know? back. Yep, held me back. But then, like, even my name, my primal soldier, like I told you the story about how I came up with that. I was like, man, what's the dumbest thing I could think of? I wanted, I was silly about it. You know, I was, I was, I, did, I wasn't taking it seriously. Thankfully, you know, it kind of worked out, but, you know, I was scared. I didn't want to put myself out there, but once you, you really focus on just being confident and, you know, just exploring new movements, don't be afraid as long as you don't hurt yourself, you know, try new things, you know, constantly search to learn from the best and constantly step your game up. Don't get stuck in, in doing one thing. Constantly try to be a well-rounded coach um, and put yourself out there and give out free content and collaborate with people. That's another thing, man. Collaborating with other coaches and learning from people who are already doing it has helped me a lot. Right. You know, because I'm not the best. I don't know everything. So learning from top coaches, learning from my elders has made me a lot better yeah how long did it take you from when you sort of came up with your primal swallowed your name and started playing around with social media to, to kind of getting it where you could you thought i've actually got a business here and i can start it's been taking about on three people. years three it years took about three years i'm on year like four almost five now. yeah so about four years right yeah i'm on year five right and with it with with the business you know it's great to have followers and a, and a big community but what have you what have, what have you done to, to then monetize that? What what products and services have you then developed uh, to make a, a business? So I spent the, uh, about a year and a half coaching kettle, my own kettlebell certifications with Onnit, and so I kind of learned the all the the foundations and basics of kettlebell training, you know, from the floor up. I got a lot of reps and teaching people how to do that. So I ended up developing my own kettlebell course. I filmed that, put it all together. It's very similar to the kettlebell certification that Onnit teaches, that we teach on it, but with adding my combinations and flows that I like to do on my social media and complexes and my own flair to the kettlebell, kettlebell game. And so I put that all, packaged it up into a, a big kettlebell course, and that was my first product that I released on my, on my website. Right. And uh, people like it. Yeah. And how long did it take you to go from an idea to creating your own product? Man, it took a year, a year right. and a half almost. Yeah, it took us, uh, I remember going in after hours at like 12, and 12 in the morning, filming till 5 in the morning when there was nobody in the gym. Uh, late night, we did like four nights in a row. Uh, we did that like three weeks, so probably like 12 nights, 12 late nights, you know, just filming late. All, all the exercises, kettlebell exercises you can think of. 
and you know I'm just just doing it grinding because it was worth it you know yeah. I, I believe it was going to be worth it and it was yeah you know and then what what what, what else then, did have you, have you done have you, do you have other products so after i released the kettlebell course uh i developed a subscription-based model for my my website so the kettlebell course is still on there you can buy that learn all the kettlebell basics it's like over 150 videos on how to warm up how to cool down for kettlebells and how to all the fundamental exercises from pushing, pulling, pressing, and uh, hinging, squatting, all the basics, and my favorite combinations and flows and complex workouts, and then a four-week workout program. All that is included in the kettlebell course. So like a digital course? Yeah, it's all it? digital, all, right. all online. And it's free lifetime access, so you always have that resource of all the kettlebell exercises and techniques available to you after you purchase it. But a couple months after that, I launched my subscription model for ten dollars a month. You get twelve new workouts every month, and a full program for me every month. Right. So that's that's my new my new product that I'm working on, trying to build that up. Right. It's been pretty. It's been doing pretty well. How how important do you think if you're a trainer and you really love training people? How, how important do you think it is to you know if they want to grow their business to to kind of create these other products around what they do as as trainers? Do you, you think? It's, yeah, what's your, what's your views on that? Yeah, if you want to make more money, you know, it's important to to definitely find specialties that you can teach people and really, you know, create like a product that you can they, that you can, you know, make a specialty and kind of share that with other people. Right. You know, that's different from, you know, just training people how to be in shape. You know, it's more of a more knowledge based. It's more of a, a skill. Right. So it's important for if you want to really diversify yourself as a trainer is to develop more skills than just, you know, being able to get people in shape. You know, right. if you want to create more products, you need more skills. Right. Yeah. You know, I think um, it's, it's important. What advice would you give to a young trainer just starting out, you know, sort of 18, 19 years old? What if, if, if you could sort of look back, what, what would if you If I go back and talk to myself, I'd be like, stop being a little bitch, man. <laughs> stop being scared. You're good enough to do whatever the hell you want to do. You just gotta just do it, man. Just like I, like they told me, pick a tool, go for it. Pick a method, pick a training system, and just go for it. You know, it doesn't have to be the best training system. You just gotta you just gotta be your best. You just gotta bust your ass off and make it the best. You know, and I, I don't I don't think my system's the best. I don't think Onyx's the best. I don't think CrossFit's the best. I don't think gymnastics is the best. I don't think Jiu-Jitsu's the best. I think everything's awesome. I think. The best is in the person, and you know it's up to you to make that a successful business. You know, you can do, you can take anything from anywhere. You can take all these different methods and make your own thing. Right. Call it whatever you want. You know, I, I have a very non-dogmatic approach to my training. Um, I use what works, and I throw out what doesn't work, and then maybe later on that'll work. You know, I'll bring it back in. I, I don't discriminate. You know, no rules. No rules. <laughs> Yeah. So I've got a couple of quick fire questions before we finish. Um, but before that, like, tell just just let everyone know where we can find out about you and yeah. your products and everything. Let's do it. So um, yeah. So just just yeah. Just before I go into this, do you want to do you want to say where you where people can find your product if they're interested in your workout your workout? Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram at Primal Swolger, and uh, my website is EricLeha.com. You can find uh, my kettlebell course and my, my uh, full monthly workouts on there at ericleha.com. Okay, and if they want to do the uh, kettlebell face-to-face -face workshops, how would they find out about those? No, those are on the, on the website as well, right, on, okay. under the workshops page. Okay. So check those out. We're, uh, we're going to be international next year. Right now we're in the States, but we'll, I'll be traveling around the world. What's your first next country year. you're going to go to? I think we're going to London. Really? Yeah, probably going to London first, and then Australia. That's the plan. Okay. Yeah. Right, so, so just a couple of quick ones then. So what, what does success look like to you? Um, success, like in the future, or like what is it in general? Yeah, to, yeah in the future. So what, pers what, should, what does personal success look like to you? I want to be able to reach as many people as I can and positively influence them while being happy myself, you know, not burning myself out, still being able to you know, be in shape, get enough sleep, eat well and be happy doing what I do, you know, because, 
what point is there if I'm, you know, tr like have all the clients in the world and I'm unhappy and I'm burnt out, I don't get enough rest and I'm just getting by on fucking caffeine or stimulants and, you know, just fucking tweaked out all the time and not enjoying what I do. You know, I want to be me, I want to be centered, I want to be balanced while helping as many people as I can. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Um, what was your last workout? My what, last workout? And I know it was a few minutes ago before I saw you, but what, were you, what did you do in it? <laughs> uh, well, my last workout was an hour-long run right. in, in the sun, which is dope. <laughs> Especially here in Santa Monica, it's really beautiful. Uh, but my last workout was at, uh, at Box and Burn that I taught. Uh, I, I taught people some kettlebell training and some body weight conditioning circuits that were really tough. Um, but super basic stuff. Okay. Yeah. How do you unwind? Oh man. Apart from DMT. <laughs> Honestly, man, I like I like hitting the, the infrared sauna and just fucking trying to take a nap in there and sweating out all the all the bad stuff, all yeah. the all the stress from the day. Just kind of unwind, sweat it out, and then. If I have time, I'll run to the local uh, spring-fed pool, which is super cold. It's like 70 degrees year-round. Jump in there and kind of freshen up. That's my. That's how I like to unwind. Nice. I also like to unwind going for a run. Yeah. For me, that's like the biggest stress relief. Just kind of letting go and putting on my favorite beats and just going for a long run. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, what's your What's your typical morning routine? So when you Alarm goes off, what what's, what's happens in the first Man, hour? Man, I still have a lot of morning clients. So get my ass up. I eat a handful of cashews, a little bit of fruit, and go coach, man. Drink a little bit of coffee and just get going for the day. That's my morning routine. <laughs> Hit the road running. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> what's the best piece of advice you've, re you've ever received? Uh, to stop being a little bitch. Yep. And, and what do you mean by that? Like... Just stop being afraid to just like, and also actually probably the biggest piece of advice, the best was not be afraid to ask for help. You know, I've always, I was, I was always stubborn. I always thought I was smart. I can, I can figure things out on my own. I can fake it till I make it. But now that I've, you know, grown up, I realized, you know, asking for help from my elders and people who've already been doing it, and already successful, or have already been through all these mistakes, it's a lot easier than, you know, falling and getting back up constantly over and over again, which is cool, you know, learning through experience, but learning by asking for help is a lot, it's a lot easier, Yeah. you know. It takes, you know, some guts to kind of put your ego at the door and ask for help, but you get you get you'll be a lot more successful a lot faster. Right. If you take advice from people who've already been doing it. Right. Yeah. But when well, it comes to love, do what the fuck you want. <laughs> Don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> so are you have you got a girlfriend now? Yeah. That one out, oh right? yeah. 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 She's awesome. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I met her in Miami dancing. Yeah. Yeah. So she's cool. Okay. So all that stuff worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then, final one. So, so escape your limits is about overcoming what you've been told to believe is impossible, and then going on and making it possible. What would be one of your most memorable examples of escaping your own personal limits? Um, Apart just, from getting a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I think you know, never. I think just doing, being able to do now what I, I. I never thought I'd be able to make a living working out. I remember growing up, my mom was like, you need to focus on school. You fucking work out all the time and you're always in the gym. You're never gonna do anything with that. Now she's so happy for me that I get to influence people and you know help them better their lives through fitness. And I'm, I can make a living off of it, you know? So I'm happy that I, I've made her proud and I'm able to reach a lot of people with uh, with health. You yeah. know, it's dope. Yeah, it sounds like you, you know, being in a place where you're you're totally you know content with where you are and what you're doing. 
And I guess yeah. a lot of people spend years, you know, I, I know I certainly took me a long time to try and find out what I was meant to do. And I guess to be able to, to be doing that every day must be, uh, must be great. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, so no matter what it takes, you know, just keep grinding it out and keep your head up. Because, you know, if you really love it, man, it's probably, you should probably keep doing it, you know, until Absolutely. it works out. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, Eric, thank you very much for your time. I know you've got dinner to go to. Oh, so. thanks a lot, man. Great, it's great my to meet pleasure. you. Thank you. You too, man. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, then please go over to iTunes and subscribe to the Escape Your Limits podcast. Leave a review, leave a comment. It really would help us a lot to continue to keep these going.